Jean-Baptiste Lully. And then all of a sudden you breathed. 
And um, we've talked about this with some other people. I know way you, we talked about this with you last week on anticipating a phrase and trying to take all your time to prep. I mean, before you even come in, you've got all this time. You can really take a good solid breath. And it's so slow that at each of your rests, you can use that whole rest to just take a nice low breath. Um, so I, I agree that we should do the beginning again to, to fix that glitch. But also, I want you to, to think less about everybody out here and think more about what your breath is doing. Because your breath is going to carry you through the phrase. And you're going to have a nice, long, beautiful line if you're connected to your breath. If you're not, it's going to sound choppy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm.
No, it is the same. Okay, so there's a word that is coming across as having a like a je sound in it. You have je sens en désespoir. Désespoir, not désespoir. Um, so désespoir. Um, I just wasn't sure if, if you had a different word in your score. Mm -hmm. um, can we just try that from the second ending, the, the beginning of the next <coughs> session from the Je sens en des espoirs?
Santiago? Uh, I liked it. <laughs> what did you like about it? Well, she didn't try to do anything complicated. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I don't know. She didn't like, it was very natural. Good. Organic. Good. Kumi, do you have a comment? Uh, I do. Her pronunciation is better, but she so much think pronunciation and English, so I think uh, we're going musically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is more better. Yeah. Good. David, do you want to make a um, comment? My first comment is your introduction, what your, your name and what you're singing, can be just as loud as how you're singing. So it was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, what? But then you sang, and it was like beautiful and this big sound. So I don't know if you need to think about that before you start speaking, or just say it louder. We want to be able to hear it. And it's, you know, the room will be bigger than this. The room is, is bigger than this. So. Yeah, that's my first comment. What's my second? Oh, uh, I have a thought, but I don't know if I should say it because it's on Tuesday. But so the first time that you sing it through, I would do it without the fermata, and then the second time with the fermata. That's how I feel that it should go, so that. The second time it has a more final sound. I mean, you don't have to do that, but that's mm -hmm. one thing I thought when I heard it. Heard it through. Um, but since it's Thursday, I don't know if you want to like change that. It might be hard to remember. It. So I, you know, if you do it that way, it'll sound beautiful. Um, that's all I have for now. I know there's something else. But. Mm -hmm. Well, we've talked about in your lessons about trying to make the first time and the second time different somehow. So David brings up a good point. That's an excellent and easy way to make it different. You just take out the fermata the first time through. So you've got, But if I know you, I know what you'll do. You'll love me at once, the way you once. And then the second time, you can make it, you know, I know what you'll do. You'll love me at once. You see the difference? And so it changes the two verses without actually doing anything really substantially different. So that's definitely something to play around with. Um, you, and, but you do have to make sure to tell your pianist that this is only the second time, otherwise they'll do it both times. And yeah. Well, and the, the pianist is going to move when you move. If yeah. they hear you breathe, yeah. they're going to move. If they hear you slap on the y consonant, like you're going right from the do to the yul, they'll play that next chord. I mean, the piano part is mostly chords, so it's, you know, they'll catch up um, rather easily. My comments on this performance, other than the little memory lapse in the beginning, which you got over to find, um, are that I, I think maybe um, you're, you're getting a little tension mixed into your throat. Maybe you're not as relaxed um, in this type of setting as you are in your lessons. So I want you to do the whole thing again, but I want you to do it flopped over so that gravity can pull your larynx up naturally. And you can get a nice high larynx. You don't have to look at them, because they'll be upside down. And then see if you can get that nice easy sound we talked about earlier, okay? So do it again, just flop over and do it upside down. Yeah. <laughs>
Yes, Marika, what did you hear the second time? Open up, mm -hmm. like more sound and more relaxed in the throat or in the breath somehow. Mm -hmm. Karen? More easier to, easier to go to high note mm -hmm. and more connected. Yes, definitely. Jane, what did you think about this performance the second time you did it? You were upside down. How did it feel? Did everything feel different? Did it feel easier or harder or what did you think? It was easier. It was easier? It sounded easier. I mean, the, the high notes sounded more effortless. David, what do you think about that? The pitch was better, too. Mm -hmm. It's not that it was like wrong or, or, or you know flat, but it it was very right, you know, really yeah. locked in mm -hmm. this this time. Yeah, you're definitely singing more in the center of the pitch. Yeah. Um, so just keep that feeling in mind. Think of how you know that nice, comfortably high position your larynx is in when you're upside down and how it takes all of the strain away. And then when you come up to standing right side up, you have to remember that feeling, because you can't flop over in the middle of your final. That'd be a little silly. Um, we would both know what you were doing, but I don't know that uh, Mark St. Laurent would be pleased. So <laughs> just, just remember that sensation and try your best to relax. We have to move on, but that was very good. Good job. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, thanks, Jim. <laughs> you know, we, we've talked about that a little bit in yeah. lessons and, and how it's been a struggle. Um, Schumann has set this text in such a way that he has these sentences divided by rests. So the sentence is, Die Lotusblume engstigt sich vor der Sonne fragt. And he has it, Die Lotusblume engstigt, rest, 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 sich vor der Sonne fragt. So as a singer, how do you do that? How do you make a sentence sound like it's one sentence when there's a giant rest in the middle that the composer put? And so that's the challenge that Catherine has in this song, is that she has to breathe, but she has to make it sound like she's just continuing the thought. So I think that's kind of what David was getting at a little bit. Um, and I agree, there were some moments that it was working, and there were some moments that it wasn't working. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think we'll definitely do it again. Um, the, the second page with some of your higher notes was um, better in some ways and not as good as I've heard it in other ways. Yeah. So, <clears throat> pitch-wise, you had a lot of accuracy. There wasn't direct cracking, you know, like that we've had sometimes. But at the same time, it sounded like you were trying to almost force the notes out. It didn't, it didn't have that effortless sound to it that we really need in this piece. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't we just do the first page again and see if you can try to get those connections between um, the halves of sentences. And I think maybe a hair slightly faster yeah. would be helpful.
Yeah, if we got it were easy, we wouldn't spend so much time on it. <laughs> Maybe I can sound a little bit quieter. Maybe I can sound a little bit more 
you know, like I'm singing to myself, and then maybe when I sing it again, it's more like I'm singing to everybody else. I'm letting everybody else know about my dear beloved. Um, so can we just do from um, the um, tanto rico, tanto rico, and then let's see if you can make it a little bit more special. It's forte. So try to think you need to have a powerful moment because when you get to the Cato Mu Ben and you want to think special and delicate, it's not going to sound any different if you didn't have a forte before. So go back to that same spot and try to think of it more forte. <laughs> It's been a lot of fun. See you all on Thursday. Um, did everybody okay. return this?